Hello and welcome to Protomotive. Today let's upgrade a single SOX Stage 3 to a Protomotive dual disc clutch. We have on the left here the components required to assemble a SOX Stage 3, which is a <clears throat> 964 Euro RS lightweight flywheel. I've already got the pilot bearing stuffed in it, ring gear, clutch disc, pressure plate couple of bolts and a throwout bearing. So the, the SOX Stage 3 clutch will handle, according to their advertisements, about 900 newton meters or about 650 foot-pounds. That's great for uh, bolt-on applications, upgraded VGTs on a 997 Turbo, 993 Turbos with K24 upgrades, K16 upgrades, these will even fit in 964s. It makes a really nice lightweight assembly for naturally aspirated cars. Uh, you don't necessarily need the 764 pressure plate for NA cars. You don't need that much torque. You can still use the stock pressure plate in that application. But then on 997 turbos, 997.2s, and even GT2 RSs and GT3s that are pushing more power, they're getting the torque up there. Uh, you're going to go to either a 764 or 487 pressure plate, which are going to handle somewhere in the 650, 680 foot-pounds range <clears throat> before slipping. So the, the SOX Stage 3 is pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and toss on the ring gear. Ring gear, clutch disc, single disc setup. We would use a clutch alignment tool. Notice the ring gear went with the beveled side up, L shape up. That also happens to capture pressure plate. Normally we'd have the throwout bearing in there, but so you can see what we're doing, I'm leaving that out. And stick your bolts in and torque those suckers down to 18 foot pounds. Pretty straightforward other than bolting the assembly up to your uh, engine and using the flywheel bolts and those torque to 63, 63 and a half foot pounds. Feel free to reuse some Loctite. So about as straightforward as you can get. So also about as straightforward you can get is the Protomotive Dual, which goes in here. So we take your SOX Stage 3, disassemble it, remove the single disc clutch, Go ahead and grab clutch housing, which drops in. Voila. Then our inner disc side that protrudes inwards, just like you would on the standard single disc. That'll face the engine side. Floater plate with dogs. The drive dogs, we've engineered these. Uh, we've engineered the drive dogs so that all the, the drives are on axis from center line rather than a square cut. These are all driven this way so that there are no forces from the rotation or the slipping of this that's gonna force the plate one way or the other. All the forces are straight perpendicular to the tangent of the, the axis of center line. So that, that gives you nice engagement and disengagement even under high torque conditions. Then go ahead and put the outer disc in place. And once again, we stick the pressure plate on. And voila, we have a dual disc. So using all the SOX Stage 3 components, it's very simple to go from a, a single to dual. Now let's show that in reverse order. Pressure plate off, outer disc, floater plate, inner disc, Clutch housing, ring gear, flywheel, 
pilot bearing. So just like the, the SOX Stage 3 single, you would assemble this onto the engine with your flywheel bolts. You can use Loctite on these. Go ahead and run these in to 63, 63 and a half foot pounds, which is just a factory spec for that bolt. For this it originally started out from the 9, 1994 Euro RS or the 38 RS America. It continued on. It was all the way up to 2012 in the GT2 RS and the GT3 RS. So yeah, we're using all factory parts there, which is really nice. Uh, so again, clutch disc. Now, <sighs> loader plate, outer disc. When you align these, Drop the alignment tool in there. Make sure it's a splined alignment tool so that the clutch discs align with each other. Otherwise, you're never going to get the gearbox on. So make sure you use a splined alignment tool in there. And then you will have your throwout bearing in place. And with your throwout bearing in place, drop your pressure plate on. And then we're going to use our special button head bolts uh, they're say on there yeah grade 10.9 not sure you can see that grade 10.9 and then as you torque these suckers down you are gonna follow them around wrong one sorry anyway you'll go ahead and torque these guys down and you go quarter turn, 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 until you're about sick of saying quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. And as you do that, you'll bring the fingers up flat. Once this is fully torqued down, the fingers should be flat across. If you need to, you can check it. Drop a straight edge across here, drop a cal caliper down, check it here, check it at the finger, check it there, check it at the finger, not in the recess, but at the finger here. And you should be plus or minus a half to a millimeter at up or down. Uh, that's also how you can check for wear. But you're going to want the fingers flat, and that's a general rule of thumb on any of these diaphragm style pressure plates. Uh, be it a Corvette Z06 or a, a Porsche 997 Turbo. A diaphragm style pressure plate, the clamping curve reaches its peak when the fingers are flat. Any deviation from flat up or down and you fall off of that bell curve very rapidly. So you want that flat straight across. That also gives you the proper amount of disengagement. If they're slightly down, it gives you a little bit more disengagement uh, if they're too far up sometimes your pedal's too low with them too far up it's not allowing the face to retract far enough to relieve the outer disc which relieves the pressure off the floater plate and the pressure off the inner disc to relieve the whole assembly so flat to slightly down is optimal on this and voila you go from a single socks stage three that has 900 newton meters of clamping load to 1800 newton meters of clamping load or the equivalent of about 650 foot pounds of torque to about 1300 foot pounds of torque so these things drive just like the sock stage three uh, changing the discs or putting in the second disc is not going to increase your pedal effort the Pedal release is going to be very similar between the two, as long as you're running the, the same discs. Uh, you can take a look on these. I'm not sure we can see. I may have to do some close-up videos or photos to be able to see it. But uh, they, these discs have what they call Marcel springs between the faces. outer disc and I'm not sure if you can see that but that little spring in there has a wave to it 
and that, that gives you a softer pedal engagement. A non-Marcel spring has no wavy spring. The factory single sport disc also has the wavy spring in there. So this particular disc will give you a nice soft engagement, approximately 25 to 70% pedal traveling with where the engagement point's going to be versus if you install a GT2 disc, GT2 disc has no Marcel on it like our inner disc and that will engage right at the top of the pedal. 80% pedal travel, it'll be like a light switch. This one's not a light switch and we use a non-Marcel inner so that it takes very little movement of the plate to release the inner disc. The Marcel is on the outer disc that the pressure plate's acting on. And that gives you the soft pedal. I may be saying that wrong. It gives you a nice smooth engagement point from approximately 25 to 70% where all the way down, fully disengaged, about 25%, you know, a little bit of ankle into it. You can start feeling the clutch, a little bit of drag starting to take off a little bit, and then you have a wide range of engagement from that 25 to 70%, then from 70 to full is fully engaged. And you're having a lot of fun. So versus a ridiculously hard to drive car with non-Marcel facings. <clears throat> We've combined uh, both in this for uh, nice drivability, just like factory. The pedal effort's the same because we haven't changed the pressure plate. You can assemble this with a stock pressure plate, not necessarily a 764. Uh, if you do want to upgrade it for a little bit more torque, if you're going crazy, uh, you can put in the GT3 487 pressure plate. Uh, there's a couple extra uh, rivets on the 487 that need to be me machined down for uh, transmission bill housing clearance. Uh, other than that, uh, they all bolt up the same and give you different amounts of clamp load and different amounts of pedal effort. Slightly different engagement points because the leverage on the spring uh, the, or the pivot point on the spring is different between them. I believe the SOC 764 has a 7 to 1 ratio uh, from the throat bearing to the face movement. So it takes 7 millimeters of travel here to get 1 millimeter of travel in the face versus a stock pressure plate that has a 5 to 1 ratio. So 5 millimeters of travel gives you 1 millimeter here. So with the, the higher travel, with a higher clamp load, you end up with about the, the same pedal effort, a slightly stiffer, but a dramatically increased clamping. So between those, all it takes is a clutch basket, floater plate, and dual discs, and a sock stage three, and away you go. You've got the, the most awesome uh, clutch assembly on the market right now for Porsches. And again, these fit... 964 from 1990 forwards, 993, 993 turbo, 996 turbo, 997.1 turbo, 997.2 turbo, manual trans, all the way up to the GT2 RS and GT3 RS up in uh, 2011, 2012. Uh, after that, everything pretty much went PDK. So this has a, a massive range of installation available, and it's a very simple upgrade for any shop or DIY or alike uh, that'll very quickly and very easily double your clamp load and still just drive like stock. Oh, thanks for watching.